The Jell-O program coming to you from the Plaza Theater in Palm Springs, California, starring Jack Benny. With Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. The orchestra opens the program with the Phil Harris Concerto Number no. 6 for oboe and drum. <laughs> If you can make a collection, ladies and gentlemen, of all the grocery orders written by American housewives during the past few months, you notice there's one item on these orders that's been appearing more and more often, and that item is Jell-O puddings. Jell-O puddings, those swell new members of the famous Jell-O family, are fast winning a place among America's most popular desserts, and no wonder. All three flavors, Jell-O's rich chocolate pudding, Jell-O's creamy vanilla pudding, and Jell-O's golden butterscotch pudding are luscious, mellow puddings, as smooth as cream and chuck full of tempting goodness. And like Jell-O, they take only a few minutes to make and a few pennies to buy. So the next time you write Jell-O on your grocery list, write down Jell-O puddings, too. And remember, in buying either of these grand desserts, be sure to bear the name Jell-O, because Jell-O is a trademark, the property of General Foods. Always look for the name Jell-O whenever you buy Jell-O or Jell-O puddings. Concerto number six for old bow and drum played by the orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, as you may remember, three weeks ago, a certain young man came to Palm Springs run down, anemic, and pale. Oh, I was a wreck. And now, after three weeks on the desert, I bring you that picture of health, that Greek god, that bronze Adonis, Jack Benny. Thank you. Thank you. Jello again. This is Jack Benny talking. And folks, I wish this was television. No kidding, Don. I don't want to sound vain, but isn't it marvelous the way this deep tan of mine sets off my big blue eyes? <laughs> <laughs> and all, all in three short weeks. Well, you do look wonderful, Jack. Your face is as brown as a berry. Isn't it, though? But I meant to ask you, uh, what are those three round white spots in the middle of your forehead? Those white spots on my forehead? Yes. Well, I sent Rochester out for a cigar the other day, and I was asleep in the sun when he came back. So uh, that's where he laid the chain. <laughs> <laughs> you see? Oh, yes, those spots look like a quarter and two dimes. Exactly. In other words, Don, I'm just 45 cents short of a complete tan. <laughs> But, Don, isn't it a shame we have to go back home next week? You know, uh, you're commencing to look great yourself. Ah, uh, feel good, too, Jack. As a matter of fact, in the short time we've been here, I've lost four pounds off my stomach. You lost uh, four pounds off your stomach, eh? Mm hmm Well, Don, if you're interested in finding out where they went, uh, take a peek in a rear-view mirror. <laughs> But, um, <laughs> at that, you have lost a little. How did you do it? Well, I go horseback riding every day, and it's wonderful exercise. Oh, it is, it is. There's nothing in the world like horseback riding. I do it all the time. You do what all the time? Oh, hello, Mary. We were just talking about horses. You know, Don, I've had a lot of experience with them, and, and the main thing to remember... Oh, stop, will you? All you know about horses is they don't wear high heel shoes. <laughs> is that so? I know plenty. <laughs> Tell Don what happened at Roger's stables the other morning. Never mind. What was it, Barry? Jack wanted to get on a horse, so he tried to make it kneel like a camel. <laughs> well, I remember a horse in vaudeville that used to do that. He got more money than I did. <laughs> and he could count, too. Of course, he had to. He was working on percentage. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, I was talking to Don. You see, Don... The main thing about riding a horse is rhythm. Is that so? Yes. Now, take, for instance, galloping. When the horse goes up, I go up. When the horse goes down, I go down. And when the horse stops, leapfrog. 
Now, wait a minute, Mary. The only time I fell off the horse is when I was trying that new trick, and you know it. What trick was that, Mary? Well, Jack put a handkerchief on the ground and said he'd ride by full speed and pick it up. Oh. So what happened? He picked up his handkerchief, dropped his teeth, picked up his teeth, and fell in a gopher hole. <laughs> oh, boy, you really dream it up, sister. You didn't leave out a thing. You had to tell him everything about the horse, didn't you? I didn't tell him where you tried to put the bit. <laughs> Now, lay off, will you? Don't listen to her, Don. You know, I've been riding for... Oh, hello, Dennis. Hello, Mr. Benny. Well, here I am. So I see. Uh, what are you going to sing, Dennis? Can I have some dialogue first? I got friends in the audience. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, of course. I'm sorry. Uh, tell me, kid, have you been having fun while we've been here in Palm Springs? Oh, boy, have I? Good. I will now sing Frenesy. <laughs> Now, wait a minute. You said you wanted some dialogue, didn't you? That was enough. I didn't want to run it into the ground. Oh. Well, there's a kid that's easy to please. All right, uh, go ahead with your song. Okay. Oh, say, Mr. Benny, I meant to ask you something. What is it, Dennis? Can I be sent to the penitentiary for parking my car in front of a fire plug? The penitentiary? Of course not. That's ridiculous. Darn that, Mr. Harris. What's Phil got to do with it? He said I'd get 10 years, so I gave him my girl who was in the back seat. <laughs> well, don't worry about it, Dennis. You'll never see jail or your girl either. Sing, kid. <laughs> It was fiesta down in Mexico And so I stopped a while to see the show I knew that frenesy meant please love me And I could say frenesy A lovely senorita caught my eye I stood enchanted as she wandered by And never knowing that it came from me I gently sighed frenesy she stopped and raised her eyes to mine Her lips just pleaded to be kissed Her eyes were soft as candle shine So how was I to resist? Quiero que viva solo para mí Y que tú vayas por donde yo voy Para que mi alma sea no mal de ti Bésame con frenesí Bésame tú a mí, bésame igual que mi boca se besó. Dame el frenesí que mi locura te dio. ¿Quién si no fui yo pudo enseñarte el camino del amor? Muerte y mal cuando mi orgullo rodó a tus pies. Quiero que viva solo para mí y que tú vayas por donde yo voy para que mi alma sea no mal de ti. Bésame con frenesí. Dame la luz que tiene tu mirar y la ansiedad que entre tus labios vi. Esta locura de vivir y amar que más que amor frenesí. Ahí en el beso que te di, alma, piedad, corazón, dime que sabes tú sentir, lo mismo que siento yo. And now without a heart to call my own, a greater happiness I've never known, because her kisses are for me alone. Now you can say frenesí. Now I can say Very good. Very good. Good, very good. That was uh, that was Frenesy, sung by Dennis C. Day, 
and accompanied by the Guadalajara Trio through the courtesy of the Dollhouse. And very good boys. By the way, these fellows are from Mexico, aren't they, Dennis? Yes, sir. Well, thanks for appearing on our program, boys. It was really a pleasure listening to you. Él nos dijo que viniéramos. Será bueno cobrarle ahorita. Él no paga nada. Nunca tuvo intención. Oh, no sean tontos. Si ustedes creen que nos va a pagar, están locos. <laughs> hmm. Uh, uh, what did they say, Dennis? One guy said they were going to be paid for singing here tonight, and the other two said he was crazy. <laughs> Oh, well, uh, tell him I'll see him tomorrow. He'll see you tomorrow, fellas. Tell him in Spanish. I can tell him in English. <laughs> anyway, boys, you were swell. Uh, and now, ladies and gentlemen, going from our vocal specialty, uh, you were swell, boys. Adios, adios. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what they're waiting around for. <laughs> No, they sang and they're through, that's all. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, going from our uh, vocal specialty to our feature attraction of the evening, as a tribute to Palm Springs, we are going to present an original mystery melodrama entitled Murder at the Racket Club or Ain't His White Flannels Messy. <laughs> now, I will play the... Oh, by the way, Jack, speaking of the racket club, did you finally join it? Uh, no, Don, I was thinking of joining, but, oh, after all, how often do I play tennis? You know? Well, that isn't their only attraction. They have a beautiful swimming pool, too. I know, Don, but, oh, oh, how often do I swim? But, Jack, know? the club is right out there on the desert. The air is wonderful for you. Is it? Oh, how often do you breathe? <laughs> now, wait a minute, Mary. The only reason I didn't join the racket club is because they don't take in actors. They don't take in actors? No. Don't tell me all that ham around there is just for sandwiches. <laughs> all right, I didn't join the club, and it's none of your business why. Now, getting back to our play, ladies and gentlemen... Hold everything, Jackson. Here I am, folks, the chic of Palm Canyon Drive. <laughs> well... <laughs> well, he finally got here. Listen, Sheik, the next time you're late, into your tent I'll creep and hit you on the head with your option. <laughs> Now, where were you? Well, it ain't my fault, Jackson. This is what happened. I was walking over here in plenty of time for the broadcast, and I bumped into a girl I hadn't seen in years. Oh. In fact, I've never seen her before. <laughs> I knew that. Well, anyway, I honked my horn and said, uh, Are you going my way, babe? Honk your horn? I thought you said you were walking. I was. What? I always carry a little horn with me. Whistling ain't polite. <laughs> Oh, you carry a horn. Well, you're the only masher I ever met with accessories. <laughs> Where is this girl, Phil? Uh, I'd like to meet her. Well, she had to go to work. She's a date picker in Indio. <laughs> a date picker? Yeah, you ought to see her climb a tree. <laughs> I'd love to. Well, Phil, I'm glad you finally got here. <laughs> I just... <laughs> I just started uh, casting our murder mystery. Am I going to be in it? Yes, Phil, you've got a very important part. You're going to be the doorman at the racket club. Well, that's life for you. Tonight, I'm the doorman there, and last night, the doorman threw me out. <laughs> you'd have gotten a bigger laugh if you'd have read that a little faster. I don't know what you were stalling around there. <laughs> well, anyway, you're the doorman. I'm going to be the chief of police of Palm Springs. Dennis, you're going to be a sergeant. And, Don, you're going to be a member of the force. All right, Don, go ahead. Oh, Jack, you're so ridiculous. I like it. Don, you're going to be a member of the force. Oh, very well. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please remember that you don't have to use force to open a box of jello. See, that's very clever. Oh, I hate to do the next line. Don, that's the whole punch. <laughs> Don, that's, that's the whole... That's a whole punch. Don, you're a member of the police force. Oh, all right. It is not only economical and easy to make, but comes in six delicious flavors. So the next time you're in your neighborhood grocers, police ask for jello. <laughs> there. Now there, that was swell. 
Uh, was that your idea, Jack? Yes, at rehearsal it was terrific. Well, that's life for you. Now the doorman can throw you out. <laughs> Say, I wonder if I've had too much, son. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, Mary, in our play tonight, you're going to be a glamorous Hollywood movie star, Miss Mitzi LaRue. And uh, you came to Palm Springs to be near your sweetheart. Oh, boy. Who has just been murdered. Oh, nuts. <laughs> I can't help it. That's the plot. Anyway, folks, this play will go on immediately after a number by Phil Harris and his orchestra. Are you ready, Phil? All set, Jackson. Say, Mr. Harris. What do you want, kid? Can I borrow your horn? I want to get another girl. <laughs> Give it on, Phil. A honk at twice, Dennis. I'm free tonight myself. Playboys. <laughs> Wise Old Owl, played by Phil Harris and his Palm Springs Orchestra. Palm meaning, I've got the boys on my hands. And Springs meaning, they ought to take a drink out of one sometime. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, for our play, Murder at the Racket Club. Que los pague para ir. Te dije que no nos iba a pagar nada. Que se puede esperar de un hombre como Jack Penny? Now, wait a minute. <laughs> Fellas, wait a minute. I told you I'd take care of you tomorrow. Manana, manana. Manana, he says. Manana. Exactly. Now, the opening scene, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know what they're waiting here for. I can't... <laughs> All right, fellas, adios. Now, the opening scene is the police station in Palm Springs, California. Police Captain O'Benny is seated at his desk, attired in a sun helmet, a tin badge, and shorts. Curtain. Music. There's the phone, Chief. I'll take it, O'Day. Hello? Palm Springs Police Station and Date Shop. <laughs> Captain O'Benny speaking. What's that, miss? You're taking a sun bath and there's a peeping Tom annoying you? Don't worry, I'll take care of it immediately. O'Day, get away from that window. <laughs> Donna, I forgot to ask her if she wanted some stuffed dates. Hey, Sarge. Yes, Chief? You arrested two fellas last night and I want you to stop filling this jail with crooks. Well, I gotta do something with them. I don't care. During the height of the season, this jail is for tourists. <laughs> I'm getting $12 a cell, American plan. <laughs> We can catch crooks during the summer. Morning, Chief. Morning, Sarge Wilson. How are things on your beat? Marvelous. I sold 40 pounds of dates. Good. <laughs> Keep going like that. You'll soon be a lieutenant. Thank you, sir. <laughs> but, Wilson, I wish you wouldn't push the plain dates. You know, we make our profit on the stuffed ones. O'Day, where are you going with those satin bedspreads? I thought I'd make sell nine and ten into a bridal suite. It's a good idea. Put a canopy over the bunk. You know, if business keeps up this way, it, it, it'll really be... I'll take it. Hello, Palm Springs Police Station and date shoppy. <laughs> oh, Benny speaking. What's that? What? Murder at the Racket Club? 
Well, there's life for you. That's the title of our play. Quiet, you. <laughs> yes? Yes, we'll be right over. What's up, Chief? Les Stofan, the tennis pro at the racket club, just phoned that Kerry Carew, the well-known playboy, has been murdered. Get the squad car, Wilson. Yes, sir. O'Day, bring along some stuffed dates, the ones with the gold tinfoil. We ought to clean up at the racket club. Okay, Chief. Now, come on, fellas. I'm going to find the murder of Carrie Carew, or my name ain't... I'll take it. Hello? Yes? Look, fellas, I told you, manana, manana. <laughs> Adio. My goodness. Now, come on, fellas. I'm going to find the murder of Carrie Carew, or my name ain't... <laughs> cars. Be on lookout for newlyweds. Bridal suite now available at police station. That is all. <laughs> Forgot to tell him about the canopy. <laughs> well, boys, here's the play. How do we get in, Chief? Right through the door. See that sign there? Racket club, members only. Open up. Open up. It's the police. Yes, sir. What can I do for you? I'm chief of police, and I want to get in here. Are you a member of the club? No, I'm here to investigate a murder. I want to see the body. Well, if you're not a member, you can't come in. What? I'll have to throw the body over the fence to you. <laughs> what are you talking about? A man has been killed on these premises, and I'm going to find out who done it. That's who did it. No wonder you're not a member of this club. <laughs> Oh, fine. From Harris yet. <laughs> now, look, bud, please. We got to get in here. I'm sorry, but you'll have to speak to the owner, Charlie Farrell. Here he comes now. Oh, hello, Mr. Farrell. Say, what's all this racket at the racket club? <laughs> thank you. Thank you. You can thank them later. <laughs> now, listen, Farrell. I'm Captain O'Benny of the Palm Springs Police Department. Glad to know you. Remember me in Seventh Heaven with Janet Gaynor? Yes, yes, yes. I remember. Now, listen. Terry Carew has been murdered on these premises, and I'm going to find out who done it. Who done it? I warned him. <laughs> All right. Who did it? Who did it? Well, how about it, Farrell? Do I get in here or not? Just as soon as you sign this membership blank. That'll be $300, please. $300? Well, I don't take in that much at the police station all season. Well, you ought to. You're charging more for rooms than I am. <laughs> okay, I'll make out a check. Hmm. Pay to the order of the racket club, $300. Boy, our date's gonna go up. <laughs> you said it. Well, I'm a member now. All right, Wilson O'Day, follow me. Now, tell me, Farrell, was Kerry Carew alone when he was murdered? No, there were several people with him. I see. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is grill the suspects. I'm sorry, the grill doesn't open till noon. <laughs> I'm ignoring that, brother. <laughs> well, here we are in the lounge. Quiet, everybody. Dates, dates, get your fresh dates here. <laughs> Would you like a box of stuffed dates, sir? Not him, that's the body. <laughs> now, everyone line up. I'm gonna find out a few things around here. Who are you, miss? I'm a movie star, Missy LaRue. What studio are you with? RKO. <laughs> oh, yes, I saw you in Kitty Foo. <laughs> Have you played any other outstanding roles lately? Yes, I had 10 words in Western Union. Stop. <laughs> now, Miss LaRue, I want you to tell me everything you know about this crime I don't know anything I was just sitting here popping my bubble gum And you didn't hear a shot? No, I really pop it, kid <laughs> Now, don't evade the issue, Miss LaRue You were in love with the victim, weren't you? Pardon me, uh, dry martini boy No, no toothpick in the olive I like to bob for it <laughs> Hey, wait a minute. What's your name? Uh, Butterworth. Charles Butterworth. Oh, Butterworth, eh? <laughs> oh, that, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Never mind that. 
Now listen, Butterworth. How'd you know my name? <laughs> you just told me. Well, I better watch that. <laughs> now listen here, Butterworth. What do you know about Terry Carew? Oh, a lovely chap. I'm going to play tennis with him this afternoon. <laughs> Gonna play tennis with him? Why, Terry Carew is dead. Too bad. Now if he wins, he won't be able to jump over the net. <laughs> Of course not. Look, the man is dead. There he is laying on the floor. Well, I was laying there last night, and I'm not dead. <laughs> you can take my word for it. Carew is dead. Now, come clean, Butterworth. What do you know about this murder? Well, I tell you, Captain, I was just sitting here bobbing for olives. That's my hobby, you know. <laughs> yes, yes, go on. Yeah. Miss LaRue, watch that bubble gum. <laughs> Continue, Mr. Butterworth. Oh, forgive me, Captain O'Benny. Are you looking for a murderer? Yes, I am. Then, uh, would I do, Captain? Who's... Who's that guy? That's uh, Peter Laurie. Peter Laurie? <laughs> Thank you. Now, listen, folks. Will you please stop applauding these guys? One of them is a murderer. <laughs> now, Mr. Laurie, what is that gun doing in your hand? Oh, I was just going out to shoot pheasants. I see. Well, what's that dagger doing in your other hand? Well, I have to pick my teeth, don't I? <laughs> now, Laurie, I want the truth here. And no beating around the bush. Did you kill Terry Carew? Who? Terry Carew. Terry Carew? I don't think so. No, I'm positive I haven't, haven't, I haven't killed anyone by that name. Now, cut that out. I'm going to get to the bottom of this, and I don't want any... <laughs> What's that? Somebody threw a rock through the window. Look, Chief, there's a note on it. Give me that. Let me read it. I'm just standing here. Okay. This may be vital evidence. What does it say? We want our money. Sign the Guadalajara Trio. <laughs> well, write manana under it and throw it back. Now, Mr. Laurie. Mr. Laurie. Where did he go? He went for a plunge in my martini. <laughs> oh. Come on out of there, Laurie. <laughs> now, there's no use trying to hide. I want the truth. Where were you at the time of the murder? Well, I... Come on. Think fast, Mr. Moto. Oh, I was exceptionally good in that, huh? <laughs> yes, yes, you were swell. Say, what about me in Seventh Heaven? You were marvelous! <laughs> You were marvelous. I wish I could think of a picture I was in. <laughs> Me too. See, folks, remember what I said about the ham here? <laughs> Never mind that. This case is solved. Peter Laurie, I arrest you for the murder of Terry Carew. All right, if you insist. Tell me, shall I go voluntarily, or do you want me to struggle a bit? What? You can't arrest him, Jack. I made him do it. You made him do what? Yes, Jack, it was the only way we could get you over here to join our club. Oh, so that's it. Well, what about Carew, the fellow you killed? Who is he? A dummy from Bullock's window. <laughs> oh, well, I thought he was much too pretty. Well, it was a good gag, fellas. As long as I'm hooked, I might as well enjoy myself. Say, Farrell, give me one of those Coca-Colas there, will you? Here you are, Jack. That'll be $12. Yipe! <laughs> Move over, Carew. Play, Phil. <laughs> Tomorrow night, when you're trying to think of what you'll have for a dessert at dinner, why not decide on Jell-O's new treat, Apple Lime Whip? Or here's a tempting dessert that will make the whole family smile their approval and uh, give you a shining example of how good lime Jell-O can be. Best of all, you can prepare this grand dessert in almost less time than it takes to tell. Simply dissolve one package of lime Jell-O in one pint of hot water and chill until cold and syrupy. Next, whip as directed on the back of the package. Then fold in one cup of strained applesauce and mold. And there's a gay, attractive dessert that you'll agree is one of the most successful you've ever served. So enjoy a delicious treat tomorrow with this swell, creamy combination of spicy applesauce and rich emerald green lime jello. Serve a luscious jello dessert real soon. We're a little late, folks, so good night. <laughs> <laughs>